Welcome to Camo Office Hours. I'm your host, Eden from Camo, and I'm joined today by special guest, Nick Mattingly, co-founder of Switcher Studio. Nick, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining yeah. today. Good to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, so for our friends that are joining us live, let us know where you're joining from. Drop any questions you have for us about Switcher or live streaming in the chat. We'll answer some as we go and or towards the end of the show, just kind of depending on the show flow. So let's start with the basics. Nick, what, what is Switcher? <laughs> yeah, uh, Switcher is a video creativity platform. It lets you edit while you shoot from your iPhone or iPad and you can record or live stream. Uh, that's what Switcher has been since 2014. Now we're starting to take a bit of a turn to be more of an all-in-one video platform. Um, and we're also looking at things around video commerce. So how you can own your content, own your audience, own the data, and monetize the content you create on your website or your own app. Um, so a bit of a transition for us. So we started with uh, a really, really great app for iPhone and iPad. It was one of the first solutions where you could do multiple cameras using other iPhones and iPads to get a different angle or perspective. And uh, it's become so much more. Wow, I don't think I even realized that you guys have been around since 2014. So you guys are coming up on that 10 year anniversary. That's super exciting. Um, all right, so since Switcher is a video streaming tool, it's a very visual thing. Do you have a demo that you're gonna share for our users today? Sure thing. Uh, let me make a few taps and I'll be right with you. All right. And so we get a lot of our camo friends asking if we can run camo from an iPad, which we can't at the moment. And we often recommend Switcher for that. So that's why we have Nick here with us today. And here is his demo. <laughs> All right. So this is Switcher on an iPad. You can have the same experience from an iPhone. It's just rearranged a little bit. Uh, but really the idea is that you can queue up multiple cameras, photos, graphics, overlays that are available while you're making your video. And we do have a partnership with Camo, so you can use Switcher as your webcam to bring these into the productions that you create. So in this example, uh, you know, maybe we start with some kind of full screen graphic. Rabbit Hole is a cool distillery here in my hometown in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, nice. Uh, maybe they want to cut to a video and we want to learn a little bit about their history and their story and like how the product's made. Um, if we were to come back on camera, uh, maybe we want to show an overhead shot. So rabbit hole has nothing to do with cars, but here's a cool uh, toy that our kids have just to give a example of, you know, an overhead shot great for DIY tutorials, maker videos. Um, but again, we're doing all of this on the fly. So everything in this top right corner is what your viewer would see. It's what gets recorded. You know, we can do titles, graphics, you know, branding. You can even bring in your own ticker. Uh, so if you had information you wanted to scroll across the screen, we've got yeah. sound effects. I mean, it's really unlimited creative options as far as what you do with your production. Here's one I like a lot. Uh, if we were to go back to the overhead shot, maybe we want to have a picture in picture where you can see oh, the person nice. that's yeah. what they're doing while um, I also wanted to bring up a quick example of some of the new things we're working on. So Switcher now offers video hosting. Uh, so you can upload videos that you've made already uh, or using other software and solutions. You can also create those streams using the Switcher app uh, and have those in an online library where you can create playlists and collections of videos. And then you can take that content and actually embed it on your website. You can do things like include links to websites, uh, to Venmo, PayPal. You can link it with Shopify and sell products on the videos that you make. People can buy live or after the fact. Uh, we're really looking at how we can enable creators and SMBs to own their content, own their audience, own their data, uh, and put their video on their .com. So this is a part of the expanded switcher offering with our all-in-one platform. It starts at $99 a month to include the video player and video hosting offering, plus the creative solutions you see with the app we've been showing here on screen. Uh, switcher Studio, the app uh, starts at $49 a month, also allows you to do multi-streaming, uh, allows you to do live or recorded content, and uh, you can take all of these assets and graphics we're using the production and actually manage those from your online account as well. So someone else could be sharing a photo right now that we bring into the production while we're producing it. 
uh, starting to become a lot more collaborative. You know, oh, with cool. that, uh, you know, we I'm going to switch back to the uh, just you know us talking. We can get out of demo mode here. So. Uh, a few more taps. All right, just going to give Nick a moment to do that and say hi to some friends joining us. Oh, Aiden and Fitzpatrick, what's up, my guy? And uh, All right. George joining us from Plant City, Florida, just saying hi to some friends. Um, yeah, oh, we have also a friend joining us from France. Hey, Yannick. Thank you all for tuning in today. Feel That's free awesome. to continue saying hi and again, let us know if you have any questions. We're going to answer some as we go and also towards the end of the show. So Switcher is very, very feature rich. I just feel like that was that demo was very, very short and sweet, but I could tell that it has the ability to do a lot. And I love that you guys are focused on like monetization features because, you know, it's such an important part of like the creator economy that a lot of people feel like is is missing. So, um, could you sort of give me like how like the journey to all of these like becoming sort of this? It's not just monetization features. It's an all-in-one video commerce platform, like you said. Like, what was the journey to to like where you guys are right now? Yeah, we've been at this a while, but somehow still feels like we're just getting started. Uh, so prior to Switcher, one of our co-founders and myself had an agency. We were helping businesses that wanted to do online video. It's how do you host it? Uh, how do you create it? Uh, we had a lot of people that got excited about the idea of video uh, on their website. This is around the time YouTube uh, had started as well. So we were just a few years into like online video really being something that people were familiar with. And at that stage, we saw a lot of media organizations, news like local TV. It was, uh, other agencies that were producing for their clients. It was a different type of customer that we had in mind where we wanted to really empower them to create better content more often. Um, and people love this idea, but it was really expensive. There's a lot of gear, it's complicated. In a lot of cases, they felt like they had to hire someone just to focus on being able to like make this a thing that they could do on a regular ongoing basis. Yeah. Um, we were also reselling video hosting through a partner at the time. This was before Meerkat, before Periscope, before Facebook Live. Um, and we were ultimately just a, a little selfish in, in how could we get people to say yes sooner? How do we get all of these complications and costs out of the way? And it, it just felt like every time we were starting from zero, when we talked with the customer, it's like they wanted to use the gear they already had. Um, That's right. But then we look at all these solutions on the market and you know, nothing was repeatable. It was different every single time. And the ramp time, you know, it could be months, could be a year. Um, so th that was the problem we set out to solve was like, how do we really simplify this where you, you don't have to have a degree in video to make great content. You don't have to have lots of special equipment. You know, iPhones had yeah. just added uh, a, you know, a nice camera and iPads had a camera for the very first time. Um, you know, it's why Instagram existed. So you could put filters on your not great photos <laughs> from your mobile device. So to make them look then, better. Like, yeah. Your phone was, you know, maybe a bit early. Um, but that that's really where the journey started. Um, you know, we, we had an initial product where you could do video from four iPhones and iPads, hit one button and they all start recording. That turned into a solution where you could then live stream. And we ended up being a launch partner for Facebook Live in 2016. The only mobile nice. app that they officially endorsed because we were doing something a bit different. Um, and from there, we unleashed it in the world and saw people use it in wildly different ways from worship to sports, news, podcasting, puppet shows, plays. I mean, it was all over the place. I think at the end of the day, what we what we really saw with that was you know, communities where the content and audience was built in. And this idea of like, why not set up a camera and really democratizing that and, and making it much more accessible. Um, I think you know, we're all much more comfortable being on camera after the last few years as Zoom has really become like a core part of how people work, like remote work is um, you know, happening in a way that we've never really seen before. Oh, totally, uh, yeah. You, you've got kids that are saying they wanna be YouTubers instead of astronauts. like. Uh, you know, this idea of creating content regularly, like being on camera, sharing your story, um, you know, creating communities, uh, it, it's something we all 
are hungry for. And yeah. so that's why I'm having so much fun with what we've done with Switcher. I think, you know, we never put it in a box and force people to use it in a certain way for a certain thing. Um, so that's created its own challenges, but it's also allowed us to see people do some incredible things. Uh, we've got customers in over 115 countries. Oh, um, wow. That's know, awesome. <laughs> The early months of COVID, we we three or four xed our subscriber base in just the first few months. Yeah. Um, but with that, we've also seen new challenges. Um, sure. You know the the way people are using social, the way businesses sell products and monetize, um, you know, all of those are shifting. And with or without us in the world, those things are going to be different than they were before. And so that's where we've really looked at what we initially started to do in helping businesses make better video more often and, and you know, put this thing out in the world and actually saw a lot of different things happen with it than we expected. It was a bit of a return to like, are we, are we really following through on that promise? And like, where are businesses today? What's happening in the ecosystem? When we think about social, like sure, you wanna meet your audience where they're at. Um, but there's also been a, a a lot of walled gardens built around these platforms and it's it's yeah. hard to know who your audience is and in, in a way where you can really control that experience and have the kind of connections the meaningful connections that people are looking for um and so that's a bit of what we're starting to combat when we look at you know new things like the switcher player and monetization totally well i think it's just so interesting just like you said i mean even i would say like five to seven years ago you had to be someone that was pretty technical that understood all the OBS settings for one. Like we know OBS is free, but like sometimes I know yeah, when I tried to you, you taps. <laughs> yeah, you, you open it up and it's like, wow, I, I don't know what any of these settings mean. And it takes a lot of like research and there's a like very big learning curve. And I feel like, you know, Switcher is here to like bridge the gap. And it's like, I know just like I mentioned a little bit earlier that we have a lot of camo, customers asking about having it run from iPad. And it's like, I think that's a really cool thing about Switcher is that it's such like, it's like mobile production. Like that means you don't have to take your laptop with you or, I mean, some people just have a desktop set up. So it really feels like, you know, a big part of the market. Um, and just, we're getting a few comments in that I feel like I, we can talk about a little bit. Yannick says, Switcher is like a virtual cam. And I was like, I think, I know that you are able to use Switcher as a virtual cam, but I'll let you sort of elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah. So uh, yes, Switcher is a virtual cam. Uh, it, it is also uh, <laughs> lot, lots of other things. So with Switcher, you can, from your iPhone or iPad, edit while you shoot and record. And as soon as you're done, that video is immediately available. So every cut transition overlay you added is there ready to go, no render time, like immediately ready to go. From your iPhone or iPad, you can stream to social accounts or, or any platform for that matter, live video. Um, there's even multi-streaming that's built in. Yeah. Uh, Switcher can also output through the partnership with Camo so that it appears in Zoom Teams Meet as a virtual webcam. So to answer the question, like that's an output option as well. Um, we've even added ways to take video made in Switcher and pull out a snippet or a clip and reframe the video or add overlays and export oh, cool. a, a short or a story to Instagram Reels or TikTok. Um, we're looking at ways where you can create non-live video for short form content as a part of the overall offering. So. Uh, lots of different ways that you can use the product, um, you know, from the things that you show on screen and, and the, the videos that you create to like where those videos actually end up. Um, so it could be recorded, it could be live or multi-stream. It could also be a webcam or virtual cam experience. And we're really excited about some of the new short form and kind of clipping tools that we're building out as well. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I just, I feel like tools these days are no longer, or not no longer, but often have to evolve to fill more of the needs of their audience and user base rather than just being able to do one thing. Um, so I think that's one of the big shifts we've, we've made along the way is uh, we, we found a really strong fit for making live video on social when you wanted to be more than just a face cam. Um, or just a webcam. If you if you want to do more, like we felt like 
we had a really strong offering for that next step up, especially if it was mobile. Um, but what we've discovered is that, you know, it's not just that in the moment experience. There's so many things that people do before they even get started. And like, what's my content calendar? What's the title? What's the thumbnail? Yeah. Like, who's my guest? There's so many things they do afterwards. And like, how are we going to repurpose this content? Can we you know, pull out captions and make it a blog post? What were the metrics? Like there's this before, during and after that people are doing regardless of what tools are at play. And there's a lot of change right. cost because people are using a lot of different tools to accomplish those things. And so that has been something that we've been really hungry to solve for. Um, but where I think we're just getting started, where we're making that jump from a tool to a workflow and where we're thinking about the problems that we solve to really help with that whole process before, during and after. And, and have it be more collaborative where it's not just one person that's doing all those pieces because that's insanity. No, yeah. no one person doing all those things all the time. Um, yeah. So that, that's kind of where we are and where we, we see Switcher going. Cool. And just to confirm, Yannick asked if it works with Teams, Meet, and Zoom. It like Switchers, good to go with all for all of the most popular ones. <laughs> Install uh, camo on your computer, and uh, as long as you've got the the lightning cable from your iPhone or iPad into your computer, it's going to show up just like a webcam in all of those solutions. Awesome. Um, so you just talked about a lot of different features, but which ones would you say are like the features you hear your audience and customers? like give you the most positive feedback? Like what would you say the top three most loved switcher features are from from like you? Uh, it, it's tough because it's used in so many different ways. So you know, what a, a church is going to find valuable in switcher might be different than someone that's doing a podcast, it might be different than someone that's doing sports or a video for their business. And so it's, it's one of the things that's been really rewarding, but also really challenging is um, it's just, a lot of different directions you can go. I think you know, going back to really the beginnings of Switcher, one of the things we've done really well is make it easy to share a different perspective. Uh, and so very, very easy to open the app on another iPhone or iPad to get a different angle. Um, and, and I love the analogy of like different perspectives as a feature to also like different perspectives in the stories that you tell. Definitely. Um, so that's always been at the core of what we've done. Um, and I, I think the, the, the type of video you can make from your mobile device with an iPhone or iPad is just different than if you're parked in front of a webcam um, or you know at your desk on a computer. Um, I think as we look forward, like offering the ability to really own your content and host that on your website, where that can be the primary destination um, where you can start to know who your customers are and build your CRM, um, you know, those things start to become really exciting. And when I look to the future, like monetization and the role of video commerce in whatever form that takes, because there's a lot of different ways that you can do that, uh, really putting that front and center of the value prop, uh, I, I think that's where we're going to really make a change for a lot of businesses and creators. Um, and it's really where our, our team and the company are focused. That's awesome. I mean, I know I've seen some pretty cool like switcher content from like art art teachers to like piano teachers and like you said churches. Um, what are like a few of like the coolest or most unique like contents that people have created with switchers that maybe people don't know about? Yeah. Um, oh man. So. Clearwater Aquarium uh, in, in Tampa, Florida, used Switcher for a time. There's a, there's a movie about a dolphin with a prosthetic fin, and like that's where oh. that dolphin hangs out. Uh, they did a ton of videos um, about that, at, like educational. They did a, a ton of like catch and release videos where they would like get baby sea turtles and like feed them and grow and then like go release them. Um, but they also had one video where it was literally like an underwater proposal on Valentine's Day. Oh. And they streamed it with Switcher, and I was like, this is just too good. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. Because I guess that is also something you think about. They make waterproof cases for iPhones, but not really for, like, I mean, there are 
you know, much bigger rig options that people do take underwater. But for the average person to be able to do something underwater, it's much easier to just grab one of those waterproof cases for the iPhone and try to take the iPhone <laughs> underwater rather than trying to figure out how to get your whole DSLR set up in there. So that is um, very, very cool to hear. <laughs> another one I, I really love, uh, like very early on with Facebook Live, there was a video that went viral. It was a Chewbacca mom. Uh, this parent had bought a like Star Wars Chewbacca mask for their kid, and they were playing with it in the car and just started laughing. Like they were just so happy and giddy. And um, it ended up catching fire on the news. I mean, they were on Good Morning America, featured by BBC. And like they didn't make that video with Switcher, but coming out of the that thing that's sponsored by Hasbro. They were like going to different conf conferences. Like we actually had them uh, at Social Media Marketing World, like on behalf of Switcher, because oh, cool. they started doing a podcast uh, and were using Switcher for that. So it was just really interesting to see someone where they had this moment in their life where video like changed everything. And as that became a bigger part of what they did, uh, Switcher was a part of that story. That's awesome. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit more about like video and like how it fits into our lives a little bit. But I just want to get to a few comments because they're kind of relevant to what yeah. we're talking about now. Brad says that he remembers doing a live video switching in cable access studio. And he's like wondered about how modern technology could take the place of that. And I feel like that is essentially like switcher and a lot of um, other desktop tools also are, are like filling the void for because you know these this is like the, the cable access studio stuff is like classic but it there's just not ev it's not accessible to everyone yeah. the way you're talking about it's just like switcher is so accessible because i feel like even a lot of people have will have the ipad pro before getting a macbook pro often because they don't maybe just don't have the full need for like a full really awesome laptop but having the ipad like is good enough and i think it's just really cool that switcher makes it so accessible for and mobile in, in my personal opinion i'm excited about taking stuff on the road so tv santa barbara is a public access station in, in california and, and they were using switcher for a time for workshops and classes and community events and where previously they had you know, two or three cameras that they would rent out you know now they could have a stack of ipads and they could be doing four or five events at the same time. Um, and they could also turn around and produce that video really, really quickly. And so like we have seen it in those uh, <laughs> arenas as well. I think one of the things we're really excited about just within the last few months, we had a hardware partnership with a company called Axoon. Um, so Axoon yeah. made a piece of hardware that's under $200. I think it's 180 USD that allows you to take any HDMI feed. So it could be a, a video camera, it could be a gaming console, it could be the output from your computer. Um, and then you can connect it to this box and have that video show up on your iPhone or iPad. And it's one of the first solutions we've seen in market that have allowed you to take video in to your iPhone or iPad and see it on the device. They really built that initially as a way to use your iPhone or iPad as a reference monitor. It's just to see what your right. camera sees. Yeah. <laughs> you've got a bigger display. Um, we were one of the first third party integrations with the SEMO and now Switcher is not just wireless iPhones and iPads as cameras, it's any HDMI device can become a wireless video source on Switcher uh, through this partnership with SEMO. So yeah, I noticed uh, that I was like, I thought it was like really cool that you guys used to be it, it was I, iOS specific, but that partnership allows people to bring in like other cameras that they do have also if they have nicer camera setups because a lot of people that have the DSLR setups still kind of want to be able to use those without also the huge learning curve that is like bringing it into OBS. So yeah, Frank says, so it's like OBS. I would say tools like Switcher is more trying to make it a lot easier than it is to have to like learn how to use OBS. Yeah, I think the example I gave earlier is uh, you know, something that might be 10 clicks in OBS is two taps in Switcher. Um, we're really trying to uh, make it a lot easier to get to those really creative experiences. Yeah, Brad just says it, it wasn't easy using OBS for live video just a few years ago. I've, I've tried OBS, it's, it's just 
there's just so many settings that you really have to dial in. So I love it's how really simple cool. it is. It's it's also free. Uh, yeah. And I mean, you see a lot of gamers use it because I mean, they're nerds. Like they they love. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I love. I'm a nerd too. You know, yeah. Really customizing it and and making it work for me. Um, you just got to be ready for the ride. Yeah, and I just want to fangirl for a moment is I'm a big sports fan. So I really okay. love like the, you know, you guys have like the scoreboard bugs and like the um, just like live sports production features that are all ready, like built in the app that I was just like, oh, man, this makes me want to like go do my own like sports broadcast. So yeah, we see a ton of uh, like youth sports, uh, soccer, yeah. in particular, uh, volleyball, basketball, you know, even high school football. Um, we had a partnership with golf channel for a time and like WWE, we're doing like proof of concepts for switcher where it's events. They would never think about bringing in a crew with their big expensive equipment, but the content was still there. And so it was that, why not set up a camera? Um, so we've, we've got to do it from, you know, little league and recreational sports all the way up to the highest level. Um, and it, it's been really cool. Yeah. I think it's really cool because I just, I remember. I mean, I'm old now, but I remember like being like high school sports was like such a big thing. And even like if you think about like AAU or even like one of my yeah. friends, he like they they like tape their like pick up basketball runs, which I'm like, oh, this could be even really cool to like <laughs> live stream for uh, they're a very specific audience. But I mean, I, I love um, I don't know anything sports related and sort of like more ways to to show people like all the different all the different levels of sports not just what you see on like nationally broadcasted television and yeah. you know the idea that i potentially could do this myself with just an ipad is also like just very very cool yeah uh, more more recently we've seen um some interest from the the game changer community and like using switcher uh, for recreational and like youth league sports so um actually if you wanted to switch over to, to my screen share for a minute. I can show some of those scoreboard options. So okay. um, hang with cool. me just a minute. I'll, I'll get yeah. that up here. Nick's going to do a couple of taps. What's up, the Cricket Forum? Good to see you. Thanks for joining today. And you ask, how may Switcher assist in live streaming a game of cricket? Well, I think Nick is about to show you a few of the um, built-in features that they have into Switcher that I'm about to switch to right now. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right. So in Switcher, we've got lots of uh, tabs here for other capabilities, do things from bringing in a guest like we are now, um, just share a link and, and anyone can join from anywhere in the world to uh, things like auto switching. So being able to pick cameras and have them automatically rotate from one to the next. If you're doing social streaming, things like polls or seeing comments, um, but for sports, we have some templates and graphics that are built in where you yeah. can manage and update so cool. directly from the app. Um, and they're highly customizable. So we could go in and we can change the logos and the colors. Um, you can add clocks and start and stop those from the app. Um, and there's a few different scoreboard options built in as well. So you know, if you were doing baseball as an example, we're going to get a completely different template. Um, oh, wow. So just a few options built in um, right there inside of Switcher. I'll switch back over to the webcam. <laughs> nice. Well, the Cricket Forum, I hope you enjoyed that demo, especially since I know you do sports content. And maybe take a look at Switcher one of these days to check out the their features. Yeah, when I was going through um, Switcher, just like I we, we do testing with Switcher anyway. And so sometimes just looking through like the features that you guys have added, like you guys have added a lot just even in the last two years, I feel, because I only started at Camo two years ago. And I remember starting to play around with the Switcher when I first started. And there was already a lot, but I just feel like it's just you guys have so many more like built in templates that are just like ready to go backgrounds that that are like all these different backgrounds that are, are available for people to use. And it's just I sometimes think about the fact of having to create different backgrounds and it's just like, oh, that's like the, my least favorite part of, of doing live streams. So, um, yeah, but so as, as we shift the conversation a little bit into like video marketing, 
Um, I think one of the reasons it works so well is because it allows brands to be seen as people. And so a question that I have to ask you is that if you didn't have this whole business to run, what kind of content would you be streaming? I mean, I see those guitars behind you. I don't know if that would have anything to do with it, but <laughs> what's like your dream show to like to, to host oh, yourself? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know if it would be music, but my wife and I had twins. They turned three in September, so uh, I don't play as much as I used to. but. Uh, I, honestly, I think I would probably be the like behind the scenes person for my wife. Um, she actually worked at Switcher for some of the early years and managed managed marketing and operations and CX. Um, but she stepped out of the company, and um, you know, we we went two years bootstrap, self funded. Like I had no paycheck for the first few years we were doing this, and uh, I always joke like she was my first investor. Like she let me Aww. be crazy and you know, <laughs> give this. And, um, you know, now it's her turn. Um, she's got an art studio. She's incredibly creative, um, lots of different mixed media from sewing to laser cutting to uh, painting. Um, and she's doing some really, really cool stuff. So uh, I, I think I would be kind of behind the scenes. And so you'd be her producer, <laughs> her channel, like Threadbanger, and um, it'd be a lot of fun. But uh, I am all wrapped up in Switcher right now and need to find a way to do some of that anyways. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, and for our audience that's tuning in live, we'd love to hear just like what type of content you guys create or if you're not creating content yet, what type of content you would like to create. And we have a, a comment from John Merrill that asked, he's a little confused on the pricing. I know you mentioned it earlier. Could you just run through it again for our friend John? Yeah, so uh, you can do a 14 day trial of Switcher um, you know, pick any plan on the website and you've got full access to the platform. Uh, if you want to stick with it, it starts at $49 a month. Uh, so that $49 a month will let you use the Switcher app, which we've showed for some of the demos here on screen where you can edit while you shoot using iPhones and iPads, record, live stream, or use it as a virtual cam. If you want to get into things where you're hosting video, you're creating playlists, you're monetizing content on your website or your own app, you move into our business plan that starts at $99 a month. That also includes the Switcher Studio app and our creativity tools. Um, that's where you start to get into a bit more of the all-in-one offering. Um, you know, we also work with larger brands and have some custom packages as well, but those two are really um, the best place to get started. The Again, the studio plan at $49 a month is gonna let you do a lot of what we've shown today. If you wanna have video on your .com and get into some of the monetization options, that'll be the business plan that starts at 99 a month. All right. And I'm sure there's a pricing page that I will be able to share in the video description after this is over. So yeah, I will make sure to get that added to the video description for anyone that wants a little bit more information. Um, yeah, and so also as we're talking about like video marketing, video content I feel like has evolved beyond just being like people content people that want to create fun videos for for their TikTok or their Instagram page and it's like more essential than ever for businesses to be utilizing video content in their social media strategy um, I'd love to hear sort of your thoughts about how like video marketing has, has grown especially just like in the last five years I feel like there's just really been this huge boom to I mean TikTok really only blew up in the last, you know, two or three years. Live streaming has been around for a while, but, you know, as as tools become more accessible to consumers, we're seeing it happen more and more and seeing also brands and small businesses utilize live streaming um, and as opposed to just like content creators doing it. So I just like love to sort of hear your thoughts on on the sort of landscape right now. Yeah, I think we're where we've seen a lot of people start is that they'll invest a lot of money in one very polished video. Um, and it may be $10,000 or more. Um, and it looks really great, but then you go two years before you even think about making another video. And within a few months, there could be things about that video that are no longer true. Yeah. Um, and when we look at you know, what's happening on you know, something like YouTube Shorts or TikTok, it's like there are people that are making video every single day. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's nowhere near as polished, but uh, you know, it's informational. People are learning. Um, 
And I think what's interesting there, you, you see this kind of in the YouTube model, the, the people that go viral, um, it, it's not often like an overnight success. They've been at it for a while and they've got a library of content. And when they have that one that uh, really gets, yeah. in, there's other content for people to watch and subscribe to and stick around. And so more than anything, I think you know the, the hardest part with any of this is just hitting the button, like getting on camera is like public speaking on the world stage. It's scary. Um, but yeah. if you can get past that first hurdle and like commit to giving it a shot over a month, you know, let, let's say you're going to make one video every week, you're going to make four videos in a month or the next three months, we're going to make a video every other week. Um, just committing to some kind of timetable where you're going to try and learn and improve and do it again. Like you'll build confidence. You'll start to have a library of content. Um, You'll, you'll find different stories that you can share. I, I think that's where we find people make the most success is, you know, if it's if it's just a one and done, like it's going to bring value, but it, it's not the same as building a community and a relationship with your audience. It's going to drive trust and drive sales. Yeah, totally. I love what you said, just your last point about building a community and building an audience. It's big live streaming and that's also why I'm doing live streaming right now is that I I feel like live streaming allows brands and businesses to talk directly to their customers and engage directly instead of sort of that that one way communication when you know say like when you're watching the Super Bowl and it's like that Ford F-150 commercial that, you know, brands, like you said, spend thousands of dollars producing these video adverts. Um, but it's just like, I feel like I was having a conversation with one of like my social media friends about this, about how we always kind of wonder like if that sort of marketing is even effective anymore because, you know, you, you go on TikTok, you go on Instagram and it's like very targeted ads based on, you know, other accounts you follow or whatever other tracking they're doing on your phone. We're not going to get into that right now, but I just feel like people sort of look for the less polished videos that are, um, that feel like they're speaking directly to them rather than a Super Bowl commercial that's meant to be shown in front of millions of people. And it's like, who is that? Who is that targeting? So I just I, I like really feel like that's that's my one of like the coolest parts I feel about about like the evolution of video marketing. It's like brands are really starting to realize that that they're needing to evolve from. And also, that's great because you don't have to spend ten thousand dollars to produce a really you know, high production video, because I don't feel like that's what works anymore. Like, I don't know if you agree with that or <laughs> what your thoughts are on, yeah. on that. There, there are a lot of different types of videos. Um, I mean, there will always be a place for agencies and, and things that have that polish where it's just as important what you don't show as what you do. Um, it's a different type of storytelling than something that's real time, that's conversational. Um, I think this is a lot more accessible uh, when we look at this type of format. And it's where you've seen things like StreamYard have a lot of success in market. It's where yeah. you see things like Ecamm have a lot of success in market. Like while we have the feature for like remote guests, like Switcher wasn't built for this type of content. It was built for mobile multicam. And so we, we see a different type of content. Um, you know, there's also things that are highly templatized where you, before you even start, you kind of know what the end result's going to be. It's like, oh, it's these these like four or five pictures. They're going to animate. There's going to be text. Like, I'm selling a product. This is an ad or a promo. Right. Um, and then you can swap that out with your own graphics, um, with your own content. But you you kind of know what you're going to get before you even get started. And so like, there's a big spectrum from you know, pull out your phone, point and shoot, or park in front of your webcam to like big big productions. And a lot of different type of content in between. I think it's it's worth experimenting with different ones, um, but it doesn't mean you have to do all of them all of the time. I just find in in our experience and what we've done for our own company, our own brand, and and the customers that we serve, is that that community building and the frequency of content is really where there's a big unlock. Um, and and kind of going back to one of the comments I made before is like making better video more often and being able to take ownership over that. Um, you know, the, the other thing that 
we're really starting to lean into is we think about the top platforms where people are spending time on on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, like they've all become video first experiences. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you go to someone's website and it's one video on the homepage that's two years old. Um, <laughs> You go to other pages where there's no video whatsoever. Over the last few years with the pandemic, like we've gone from less than 50% of businesses in the US having websites to more than 70% of SMBs having websites and they're video barren. Like that's going to change with or without us. Yeah. But there's so much opportunity there. Um, that, that's really where we're looking to really partner with businesses and, and learn what challenges they're seeing, um, what problems they're looking to solve and, and how we can build for that. Yeah, so that's why I guess you guys built like sort of the all-in-one video commerce is sort of targeting like, or I, w I don't, not just targeting, but sort of like being able to lead brands in that direction and like showing them the value of it. Um, so yeah, I love that right. you you brought up like the different things that you guys have tried. I was like, I know that you guys have sort of a lot of different types of videos, um, at least that I've seen. Like I, you guys have like the sort of advert style ones as well as you guys do the live streams. You guys have the, you know, sh short like video, um, like that's just like for sort of standard updates. Um, like what is, what is like your personal favorite part of like the social marketing that you guys do <laughs> at Switcher? I'm curious to hear. <laughs> Um, I, I love conversations like this. Um, I, I love building relationships and partnerships. And, and that's just the thing where I find joy and I think I do well. Um, and, and I think it, it also takes some of the pressure off. Like it's, yeah. it's easier to banter and, totally. and bounce ideas off of another. And it's not all about me. Like yeah. you all are doing great stuff too. And like, you know, can Switcher do a virtual webcam? Yes, with camo. Um, <laughs> So I, I think this is just a really accessible format, and it's it's one where the the video kind of podcast experience is one where I probably end up on camera more often. Um, but I also see our our team like doing some really awesome behind the scenes stuff, or like TikToks, they're you know short form sixty second videos, and I, I kind of want to challenge myself to imagine how I might participate in that in some way, whether it's for Switcher or for myself. Um, cause it's so easy to consume and just like yeah. doom scroll. Scroll, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's also a lot of fun to create. Yeah. So, um, so you no know TikToks for you yet yourself is what I'm hearing. <laughs> I, I watch them and All we're right. building tools so you can make that kind of video. Uh, I haven't made as many of those as I would like. So that's I, that's a personal challenge for myself. We haven't either. And it's definitely on my <laughs> list to like prioritize at some point. But I also, you know, I think that I'm very similar in that regard. This is what I love doing is I like the conversations. I like the back and forths. Um, I've, I've made like, I think two TikToks and it, it was just like, I was very much like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I think it it's, I like to keep learning and keep growing. So, you know, maybe we can like, uh, collab for a challenge, a little shorts and TikTok style, style style challenge for our audience base and for us. We'll have to do it too. <laughs> so that's uh, just we an did, idea um, off the top of my head. <laughs> we did a uh, company-wide like horror film fest challenge at the end of last year. Oh, I saw it, some of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we had people on different teams that maybe don't normally work together that paired up and like came up with their own ideas. And we, we gave everybody a day to like not worry about their day job and do something fun and had a watch party and like it was more so for us but we shared yeah. some of it out there and um it it forced everyone to do, <laughs> use our own product where maybe that's not a normal part of our day to day um it, it also got us thinking a bit differently about how our product could be used as there was some really creative things that um th they even did that we hadn't considered before so um I, I don't love know. That. that was fun. Yeah. We that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. And I also love you mentioned video podcasting or podcasts a while ago. And I think that's a place where I'm really starting to see like not like live video also, but also just like some a lot of people are just recording their podcasts to be able to sort of have those like live reaction shots to like put out later, even if they're not live streaming mm -hmm. it. Um, do you guys have a lot of like podcasters using Switcher for for their content? Or have y'all seen yeah, that sort of rise? Our big markets, for sure. Um, and where we do it a bit differently, uh, 
would be those in studio experiences where having you know right now we're in different locations and i think we kind of uh put the podcast label on this format yeah <laughs> you know, podcasting started as like people sitting on a couch or around a table talking to one another and that just hasn't been easy to do the last few years but it's also making a bit of a comeback um, yeah. and i think that's the use case where switcher is really well suited it's like iPhones and iPads are not invasive. You don't have this giant camera setting in front of you. You can get them in tight spaces, um, and get some different perspectives, um, and you know the, the the kind of audio setups that people use. You know, Rode has some really great options for like the podcast world. Yeah, you can use those with an iPhone and iPad. So it, it, you can go beyond just the built-in mic on your mobile device and, and actually use professional audio gear as well. So. Um, it's really cool, um, and, and there's a lot of people using it in that way. Yeah, I we definitely had a question about audio that we're gonna get to. I was like, I think we're gonna do a little Q and A towards the end, but I did have like just a, one more question that I sort of wanted to make sure that I, I asked you was like, so we're kind of in the process right now ironing a few events that we want to hit up this event season. We saw that you guys were at NAB earlier this year. Um, I'd love to hear some of like your major takeaways from the event and sort of like what was like some of the coolest like upcoming like tech or, or yeah. trends that you feel like you're really excited about. Yeah, NAB is always a cool show. Uh, I'd, I'd been seven or eight years running and, and took a bit of a pause. Cool. Um, so this was my first year back and I think it was a big comeback year for the show as well. Um, we've participated at NAB in the past as a part of the Facebook Pavilion, as a oh, part of Sprocket, okay. yeah. their, like startup um, accelerator program. We've partnered with other vendors where they're doing like interviews with uh, Adobe and Sony and like they're using Switcher to produce the content. Um, so we've participated in a lot of different ways. This year we were on site with Axoon um, to nice. announce the, the relationship where you can use HDMI cameras uh, with Switcher and make those wireless cameras. Um, I did get a chance to walk the floor. Uh, I had some of my own partner meetings set up. You know, some of the things I saw this year uh, is like video screens, video walls were everywhere. Um, it was like every 10th booth, there was just this giant, you know, I think virtual production sets, like not green screen, like actual video. That just seemed to be a big one this go around. Um, okay. you know, if anyone's watched the Disney like Mandalorian, uh, series yeah. that that there was a big innovation in the way that they're shooting that show and that they have a, a curved video wall where they actually generate the environments and backgrounds in Unreal Engine and like as they move the camera like it's not a, a effect they're doing in post-production like they're actually able to film it in that way from the get-go so you think like Mandalorian oh, wow. they like they've got real reflections from these like virtual backgrounds um, but it's so out of reach. Like, I mean, I can't imagine how many hundreds of millions they spent on, you know, this studio. Um, and there's this, I guess, idea that that can become more accessible, but it's still like really out of reach. A little bit. Yeah. A lot of us probably sitting here today. I don't think I'll have a video wall anytime soon. Um, I think some of the other things I saw, uh, were, were really, um, big shifts in, post-production editing with the innovations around speech to text. Oh. Um, so if you think about like the script as a platform where you can upload video, it transcribes it, and then you can make decisions on it, what people are saying and clip out video versus actually looking at a timeline and like thumbnails. Yeah. You know, Adobe added that to their suite. Um, I think DaVinci did as well. Like th there was just this idea of um, you know, that, that kind of annotative way of editing. Yeah, being we, we love big... Descript. Yeah. And uh, yo, that's actually a great opportunity for me to give a little tease. That's actually who I have as a guest for our next office hours is one of our friends from Descript. So just love that. <laughs> love that synergy there. Um, Awesome. Uh, well, give me an intro. I'd love to chat with them as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. Yo, for sure. I, I will. I'll be happy to loop you in. Um, all right. Let's get Good to deal. some of these questions. We're in our last 10 minutes here. Um, yeah, so Yannick mentioned how do you manage audio, and Brad asked if we can integrate audio from sources like Rode, yep. Wireless Go. Could you just tell us a little bit about the audio options that you can yeah, use? Yeah, so uh, you know, by default, it's going to be the built-in microphone on your iPhone or iPad. 
if you have AirPods or you're using Bluetooth, you know, then that can become your audio. Um, but you know, every iPhone or iPad has a USB or lightning port. And with right. that, you can get dongles or adapters to use with lots of other professional audio gear. So whether that's a single you know, handheld mic uh, where you've got it ported in directly to your device or whether you're using an audio mixer of some sort, um, you know, as long as you've got that dongle in between, uh, yeah. you can use just about any USB audio source with these devices. Now there's also adapters where you can take an analog signal like a TRRS or XLR. You know, we see a lot of churches as an example where they have an existing audio set up and they're able to take the line out of that and bring it into Switcher. Um, with Switcher, the audio does need to be routed to the main iPhone or iPad where you're, you're, you're kind of gotcha. making all the edit decisions. And as long as it hits that device, it's going to stink up with everything that you do. Um, even if you're using multiple cameras, that's, that's a bit of our magic as we, we make that, uh, just work. Yeah. And I know that you guys did a really good, I, one of your live stream, maybe office hours also where you guys walked through the audio sort of like various audio setups, which I'll definitely put in the show description. Cause I, I, I like to just learn a lot just because audio is something yeah. that I don't really, um, I, I started out in podcasting, but it was the USB mic, you know, I don't, I don't know how to set up a roadcaster or anything, but yeah, they, I know switchers got some great resources on their page that I, I've watched myself that I will link in the description for you guys when it comes to um, for for audio and switcher synergy there. Um, all right, and then Brad also asks, how would you create overlays? Is there a particular video file format? And how would you create cryon text on the fly or overlay video graphics on the fly? That That is all you, Nick. I'll let you take this one. Yeah. <laughs> got loads of templates built into switcher um so fully customizable where you can replace logos change the colors change the fonts uh so without knowing how to build graphics or using third-party software you can use a lot of the built-in templates to do some really cool stuff uh you can also bring in any image that has a transparent background that's saved as a, a png uh so imagine using canva to make some custom graphics yeah. bounce that out and bring it in uh, Switcher also supports alpha video. Now there is a very specific f file format and type that you have to use, but if you were to make really advanced graphics in a professional tool like After Effects, you could export that in a way where they could be used in Switcher. That starts to be more of our pro user. Um, you know, most people are using basic overlays or the built-in templates, and we're looking to add more and more of those all the time. You guys have a really, really awesome templates uh, library that's built into the app already. I, I was looking through them just when I was prepping for the show and I was just like, wow, you guys have so many like built in options. Like I, I just really it's it's great. And I'm like a Photoshop and Canva nerd also. And I'm like sort of venturing into After Effects a little bit because I really want to get like a cool animated background. But um, I think having built in ones available for your customers and your audience to use is is so valuable because a lot of people like I have fun with with the graphic stuff but like a lot of people don't find that fun at all so it's you know I I just love that you guys have so many options that are already in the app so people don't have to mess around in Photoshop and Canva if they don't want to <laughs> right on yeah. Um, Brad also asks, what about environments where you can't use wireless networks? Do, is there Are there wired solutions right now? Or is this? Yeah. So uh, your Wi-Fi does not have to have internet access if you're recording. Like a, a, a router or um, a Wi-Fi network is really how we manage the communication between multiple devices. Like multi-camera, you could have a router that's just plugged into the wall with power and no internet and still do a multi-cam production. Uh, internet comes into play when you wanna do streaming. And so with that, uh, you know, most Wi-Fi environments are going to work okay for Switcher, but I'll give an example. Like if you were to go to a coffee shop uh, or you were to go to a hotel, they're gonna have special settings on their network for privacy um, where we can't automatically have the camera see one another. So there's a few changes or tricks you need to do there, or you need to bring your own Wi-Fi, like use a hotspot or bring your own router. Um, you also imagine like different formats or types of video. If you're doing something where it's an interview on the street or it's a podcast and you know, everything's yeah. relatively close, like 
you know, most any basic router is going to work. Even the hotspot on your phone is going to work. Okay. If you're trying to get coverage for a football field or a, a concert, yeah. uh, you may have more distance between the cameras. You're going to have more people and more interference. You, you'll need to be thinking about your network infrastructure and what you set up for that to be able to really take advantage of the, the multicam experience. Yeah, now, but- you can hardwire your cameras. There are adapters where you can do Ethernet, like physical connections um, for your iPhone or iPad into a router. So the, the Apple uh, Ethernet adapter that you use for your laptop, you can also use that with an iPhone or iPad. We've done some of our own setups that are hybrid, where some cameras are hardwired and then some are wireless. Um, so it's not it's not something that we've been easily able to solve for on the product side and what we offer. Um, but depending on the the use case um, or the type of content you're creating, um, you know, there, there's different Wi-Fi solutions depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So the Cricket Forum asked if he can connect more than two camera. I mean, two cameras. 200 meters apart wirelessly. So it sounds like it would just kind of depend on. So back to this this conversation is as long as you've got a big enough bubble or, or you know a Wi-Fi network that can give you coverage for you know, where you want to place your cameras, uh, or can expand that network, then you can have them wherever you want. But they yeah. do need to be on the same local Wi-Fi um, to really have that multi-camera experience. And if anyone has like specific questions about that, I'm sure Switcher has an awesome support team that are happy to like give you very like detailed and um, sort of suggestions based on your specific use case. So feel free to reach out to Switcher. These are our friends. They're very nice, awesome people. So don't be afraid to reach out if you have further questions about um, just about these sort of more specific um, network settings things because that is also something that I I'm like wow I it's that's like another universe of technology and that I yeah I it's cannot. audio and networking yeah. are, are where it can really start to grow um, but don't let it be a blocker like you can also start small I and mean, we see a lot of people even with just one device using the built-in camera they're able to add their logo use yeah. you know, some of the built-in templates and graphics um, you know, in, bring in a pre-recorded video that they can switch to or other photos. Like you can still accomplish a lot with a very, very basic setup. You know, just using one device and the built-in mic or a single microphone. Um, but if you want to do more, there's a lot of paths to get there. Um, you know, we we do have a really engaged online user group and community um, on Facebook. So it's Switcher okay, Studio enthusiasts. Cool. There's tens of thousands of people that are sharing videos, asking questions, helping one another. It's a really, really cool place to be. Uh, on our website, switcherstudio.com, we've got a help center. Every question we've ever been asked is documented. Uh, and we've got wow. uh, you know, tutorials and videos. Um, and then we also have a great support team. So if you email us at switcher, uh, support at switcherstudio.com, uh, we can help you out on that front as well. Yeah, and I'll grab like that Facebook community link also that I'll share in the video description so people can can reach out and be part of the community and see if there anyone else can offer them, um, you know, some suggestions. And Brad also asks, is this show being run via Switcher? This is I'm using Ecamm right now. I was uh, telling Nick that I am a, a grandma when it comes to using an iPad. It's it's like I. I, I, I don't know. The big screen intimidates me a little bit. I have that is a, one of the learning things that I have on my list that I want to get a little bit better at. One of these days, I will be doing a show with Switcher. So, but this is currently using, I am currently using Ecamm right now. Um, I just want to have two comments that I wanted to get to. We have our friend Yannick that asks about any discounts and Brad also <laughs> asked about discounts for nonprofits. Um, do you guys offer any any for, for like nonprofits or any, do y'all ever run specials for, for Switcher? Yeah. We, we don't typically discount the, the product or offering. We pack more value and we support the product and um, keep making it better. Um, we do from time to time offer nonprofit uh, discounts. Um, if you email our support team and can provide you know, documentation or information yeah. about your nonprofit status, um, I'm sure they'd be happy to work with you. All right, and we are right about at time. Thank you all for joining us today. We had some really awesome questions. I feel like I learned so much about Switcher that I didn't even know from just looking at the app. I feel like sometimes you can go through an app but not even really know all of the offerings that it has. So I definitely have a bit more 
deeper dive to do myself. Um, Nick, thank you so much for coming on to share about Switcher and for just hanging out and, and, and talking about video stuff because just like you said, we're nerds. We love this stuff. We love talking about video and, and sort of where it's going. Um, yeah, thank you all. Thank you to the live audience. If you guys have topics or, you know, things that you want us to cover, let us know. And with that, Nick, I will go ahead and let you go. Thank you, everyone.